Welcome to Your Food Looks Funny. I'm Marcus T, and we have another special guest, more family on today, and we're talking pasta. I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. All right, so like I said, we got more family on here. Recurring theme this year, if you haven't noticed yet, and you probably haven't been listening. But this week, we're talking pasta. March is National Noodle Month, and I've got somebody here who loves pasta, my big brother, also a fellow March birthday. Lamar, say hello to everybody. Hello, family. How are you? Like I said, it's National Noodle Month. For some reason, I find a national holiday for everything that is just timely. And considering we're both March birthdays, it's pretty timely. So I, I dug into some things about pasta in general. How often do you cook pasta? Often. Yeah. I could be at least once a week. I have something every couple of weeks. It's been with me since birth. Okay. What's your favorite kind? Spaghetti, by far. Okay. We talking just regular spaghetti, not thin or anything? I All the above. <laughs> spaghetti, angel hair, then I buy it off. I see spaghetti on sale, I will get it. <laughs> okay. Most don't know this, but I'm asking a lot of these questions as if I don't know, because I don't know. Again, this is my brother, but we have a, a, a vast span between us. Um, not too vast. I know he likes to be younger than, uh, hey, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know a lot of his eating habits, a lot of his cooking habits, other than what I experienced for a few years. So learning these things firsthand along with you is, uh, is enlightening. But I know he's a, a huge fan of spaghetti and pasta in general, but I don't know the ins and outs of the details. So learning them right along with you. So spaghetti in many forms and fashions, uh, you cook it, you know, weekly. Walk me through your process of, of what you're making and what you're making it with. What's your favorite sauce combination? I have some, you know, I actually should know the name of it, but a sauce that I get from Costco. Mm hmm that I would do, um, it's more Southern, so it's red Italian. I will do some Prego. Those will be my base. Uh, I'll go by our Aunt Deb. She throws me some stuff, so I'll put some tomato paste in, some tomato sauce. I usually try to eat turkey. Okay. So I get turkey from Whole Foods. I try not to eat beef as much anymore. So it's throwing in some mushrooms. I'll cut up some green peppers, all of that to go in my sauce. Onion, slice those up. Usually do some garlic powder. Uh, we'll do some seasoned salt. We'll do some pepper. So that's my general gist of it. And then have it for a couple of days. Because I actually do not mind leftovers. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put something in the freezer. Yes. yes. So when you cook your spaghetti, walk me through the, the process of cooking the actual pasta itself too. So whether it be sometimes it's putting stuff in the crock pot, but I have a big pot, like not as large as our grandmother used to have because she right. had 14 children. Right. But uh, I put some water on that thing, put it in there, put some salt in the water, do a little seasoned salt. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that lately to try. I put some garlic salt, maybe some garlic powder in the water. Mm -hmm and some oregano at the end. So once I do the spaghetti and put it, I'll put some oregano um, so it goes on there. Since I pretend like I'm in Italy, <laughs> there's something in there. So that's the actual spaghetti. It typically doesn't take too long. That's one of the reasons why I cook spaghetti because right. it's easy for me and I love it. So uh, good times. I love that food. So that was great. I, I liked how you walked me through the process. I liked that you had more than just, I bring the water to a boil and I throw the pasta in there. So oh, no. <laughs> just just starting there in general lets me know that you are cooking this more often than most yes. and uh, you're going a little bit more into detail. So what he just described there is uh, a major flaw that a lot of people skip past when making any kind of pasta is they skip the first opportunity to add flavor to your pasta is in the boiling process. So the amount of seasonings and things that he adds to his water can make your pasta taste that much better, exponentially better, as opposed to just dropping it in some boiling water. Or for those who uh, get even lazier, decide to just throw the pasta in the water before it's even boiling. Come on. Don't be this person. OK, I, I've seen several people do it on the job and my wife decided to do it one day. And I had to ask her the question of was she doing it on purpose? Was she in a hurry? And uh, she just didn't know. She didn't know. So bringing your water to a boil is, is a first. So he had a tall, 
big pot that he used fantastic because he's using spaghetti so it's a long noodle you want it to be fully submerged or as much as um, submerged as possible before you start cooking it and then adding the salt and the seasonings to it is just going to add flavor to it i'm not sure how you like your spaghetti you put your sauce over your noodles or you mix it all together i put it typically put it over okay and then i do the mixing so on a plate put the noodles out first Mm -hmm. then put the sauce on and then i'll i'll mix it up together I don't think I have a particular preference, but it, it it is greatly adjusted depending on how much flavor the noodle has. That's a big deal. Um, but it seems like it's one of those big debates. You know these these random face surface debates on uh, on Facebook, where people be like, you know, which way do you like it, sauce on it or sauce mixed in? That's one of those things. Like, if the noodle doesn't have any flavor, and I remember many times growing up where different people would make spaghetti and they would separate the sauce from the noodles and the noodles would have zero flavor. It would just say zero. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, what What was the point of separating them? You really wanted to separate the taste of nothing from the taste of the sauce. It's clearly defined now. That's right. The, I agree with you on that. <laughs> the noodle is your vessel. So he said he makes the sauce, he makes the noodles, but he seasons the noodles. But if you're going to mix them together, There's also a part in the process where you want to not undercook it, but you're cooking it to al dente. So you're cooking it to it has a little bite left to it, but still pretty much fully cooked. And then it'll absorb the rest of the flavor from the sauce or whatever else you add to it. And pasta is pretty simple. So we went through part of the process of cooking it and a little extra. It's only two things. It's eggs and it's flour. Sometimes water, but it's basically two ingredients. It's made to absorb it's uh, it's like a baked item. And if you're going to cook it dry, which most people do, it, it takes about eight to 10 minutes, depending on what the pasta is. But if you're going to cook a fresh noodle, do you ever cook fresh noodles? Rarely. Have you okay. ever, have you ever tried to make fresh noodles? Uh, not particularly because that takes too much time. And you know how my thought process is. On right. time. Efficiency like, is key. Yeah. <laughs> so, <no. laughs> so fresh noodles take obviously more time to make than just going to buy a dry pack or even a pre-made, you know, fresh pack, but it takes minutes, like a couple minutes to cook them. And a lot of people I've seen that go with a fresh noodle, cause you can buy them in the refrigerated section now, you know, a fresh ravioli or something like that. They'll overcook it, becomes mushy, or they let it sit for too long. And you said you're an advocate of leftovers. I will eat leftovers, I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got maybe a day or two before it's time to move on. But when you save pasta, um, do you just normally put it in a container and put it in the refrigerator? Yes. So I have a number of black plastic containers and I will put something in the fridge. And typically a day-ish, a day and a half is my limit as well. And if there's too much left, I'll put it in the freezer. Okay. Um, Do you oil your noodles before you put them in the refrigerator? Not always. Sometimes I put oil in the water mm-hmm. when I'm cooking them and we'll have them, but not if I'm just arbitrarily putting them in the refrigerator. No. So you don't, uh, you don't run into any sticking, any, any problems with creating a ball of pasta? Uh, if I put enough oil when I'm making them, mm-hmm. no. Okay. Okay. This, this is another very vital step. So making sure you add some sort of fat, so it doesn't necessarily have to be oil, but some sort of fat to your noodles in order to ensure that they have some buffer between each other because they're still cooking. They still want to absorb and they start to absorb the starches of each other, which makes them one big ball of mess. And this is also an undesirable thing when you go to reheat them later. Although I'm not a big advocate of reheating pasta unless it has some kind of sauce on it. it this was something I just read in an article. So I didn't realize that when you boil pasta and I haven't completely fact checked this with like, you know, the USDA or anything, but when you boil pasta in salt water, it says it absorbs the flavor of the salt, but not the actual sodium content in that. Would you believe that? Hmm, That's interesting. No, I don't know. Because if you're putting the salt and put the sodium in there, why would it not (coughs) absorb that? So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm like the salt is only two molecules. So if it's absorbing the flavor, how do you get the flavor from it without getting the actual sodium content itself? Yeah. That one surprised me. Yes. It was very confusing. Like I said, didn't have time to fact check it, nor did I really care um, because uh, I'm going to use it anyway. So it got to one of those points where it's just like, eh, how much do I really want to disagree with what I'm doing later anyway? That's why I try to buy things like Mediterranean salt or something in the land that's less than the 
regular salt, so it'll be less sodium mm -hmm. as we get older. You know, I'm accidentally getting older, so don't want to put too much salt. Right. Um, other than spaghetti, well, let me ask this. What's the most complicated pasta dish that you think you've made? Uh, I tried to do a rigatoni one time because I had some rigatoni at a restaurant that I really loved. Mm -hmm. Try to do that with some beef. It was more work and more cumbersome than I wanted to partake of. So it didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it to turn. Mm -hmm. I've never made lasagna because it's not something I eat regularly. Okay. Yeah, that wouldn't be a regular eating item. So I would love, but rigatoni is something that I really, really like. So I need to get better with that. Actually, I need to try it. <laughs> so with lasagna, and it's one of those things like, if you're making it and you don't have multiple people to eat it, it's tough to make small portions of it. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I try to avoid making it because it's only the two of us and she doesn't eat that much. I have thought about making it, cutting it down and then taking out little squares of it and freezing them that way. But it, like you said, it's just too much work to do all the extra. And it's something that mom didn't make a lot growing up. She made her macaroni and cheese like a lasagna. Yeah. She layered that. Yeah. But it wasn't, lasagna wasn't something, she would make spaghetti and that was something we eat. But I'm like, lasagna wasn't something that I ate much growing up. So it, I never got a big taste of it or mm. taste for it. So oh. Since you brought mom up and I thought about this the other day when I was talking to Davina, I don't know if you've heard the episode with Davina yet, but she referred to Aunt Doris not cooking a lot of vegetables when they were younger, which is why she didn't eat that many when she got older until now she started cooking them herself. But that's one of the things that it was just like an afterthought of what it seemed like when mom made food. She was very in depth with the meats and with the starches, but not as much with the vegetables. It was more like I'll pull something frozen or, you know, something out of a can. It wasn't as much effort put into those. And she wasn't really known for her side dishes anyway, other than the macaroni and cheese. It was always a meat. So that's what I grew up loving. Sir. Um, See, me with pasta on that note, she would always say when she was pregnant with me that Aunt Re, her, her aunt, uh, Aunt Re would make spaghetti and meatballs. She ate spaghetti and meatballs every single day. <clears throat> mm, she was like, she would always have, that was, that was one of her things. So I grew up, it was my birthright mm. <laughs> because she ate that so much. She said she ate that and blueberry pancakes. I don't mm. eat blueberry pancakes like that, but she said those were her cravings. Mm with me so yeah when she would make spaghetti when grandma would make spaghetti those were my things I remade it a couple times for me hmm. it was just my thing but she had that she said she ate so much of that when she was expecting me I would be interested in doing a full on study on that of how much goes into the diet of a, of a mother when she's pregnant versus what the kid actually eats down the road mm -hmm. because I mom was a champion eating competition eater by the time I, I was around. So she'd be three or four plates deep when we go out to buffets before I realized that she probably just ate everything on the buffet when I only wanted three things. The main thing that she consumed a lot of was Pepsi and I'm not a Pepsi drinker at all. She, when you were, she was expecting you. I know she had a lot of corn. She had a craving oh, for corn. Wow. A lot. She had that. I'm trying to think of some of the other things. She, but that was definitely one of her. She just craved corn a lot when she was doing. But I was like, yeah. Well, I, I definitely got that one honest then. Mm -hmm. Corn, cornbread, corn tortillas, any of it, I'll take it. I remember that being one of her things she was longing for and craving several times. I'm like, God bless you. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, so the times, but yes, yeah, spaghetti. She absolutely craves spaghetti. So if I can go to an Italian restaurant, I will go, I will get some pasta. So it, it's one of my, it's probably my favorite as a genre of food, Italian. It's probably my favorite type of food. I'll go to an Italian restaurant in a second. Okay. Good from, from the high end to if I'm home in Sandusky, I love Fazoli's. Ah, yeah, I remember that about you too. I will go there and get some spaghetti. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not as big on it. It's uh... I love pasta and it's got to be after a while, especially after making it for 10 years and so many different versions that you've made of it, you run into monotony. So there's cream sauce, red sauce, you know, oil based or wine based. It feels like those three always repeat themselves when it comes around. And every restaurant that we go to now seems to have a Cajun chicken pasta 
of some sort. Is like that the new brand standard or something for every pub or small bar and grill to have one of these? I've been known to taste some of those. Yeah. So just I, to see how it is. I'm yes, sure you, I'm sure you've been to New Orleans more than once. I have. Are you big on the food scene down there? Uh, New Orleans has some great food, and but I, it's interesting. I don't get as much pasta there. Mm. I'll eat desserts. I'll eat more their etouffee, but I'll eat some beignets. But and I know they do some Cajun. See the problem down there for me, mm-hmm. with pasta. I'm not a big seafood eater. Uh-huh. So a number of things that have crawfish in them and shrimp and all that. I might do some etouffee, but I'm not doing their Creole gumbo and that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. their pasta, I, that's just not my uh, cup of tea. It seems like the more people I interview, the more seafood becomes the. Uh... The Kobe Bryant or the Tom Brady of the conversation. It's either you love it or you hate it. There's no in between with mm-hmm. seafood for most of the people I talk to. I'm 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 not for it. If I'm gonna eat anything, shrimp in something, maybe I didn't ask for it though. It just happened to be in there along with something better or Lake Erie fish. Yeah, I will not eat shrimp and stuff. And as long as I've lived here, I'm going on twenty years well, actually twenty years on the East Coast and mm-hmm. Maryland. Blue crab crab boils and those kind of they're completely lost on me. Yeah. I'll go and I've gone with people to get crabs and I've had chicken wings and fries and I'm like, it just, I'm not going to sit there and break up and do too much work. I'm not a crab eater. I won't eat shrimp. I eat salmon and like tuna. That's it. A few fishes. I'm not a big seafood eater at all. I'm sure you're a firsthand witness of a lot of my eating habits as a kid. I don't know if you know as much about me eating as an adult, but I was pretty picky. I mean, the show is stemmed off of myself and my wife basically, but when it comes to seafood and if you go to if we were to go to a seafood restaurant when I was a kid or go to somebody's house and they were having a seafood boil or any kind of seafood centered dish, I would find a way to eat around it so I could deal with eating a few vegetables or something that tasted like it was cooked with shrimp or whatever. Now, nah, I'm like you. Where Where's the chicken? Where are the wings? Don't don't hand it to me. So Phil and Davina said two great things in the, in their two episodes. Davina said she went to a friend's house and they had a seafood boil and, you know, they cook everything together. So the vegetables, all the seafood, the eggs, all that stuff. And they were like, oh, we didn't know you didn't eat seafood. He was like, well, you can eat the vegetables. She was like, no, I can't. It touched the seafood. Mm-hmm. And Phil, who I'm sure, you know, is not the pickiest of eaters. Right. He eats one thing and that's peas. And he said, if peas are on his plate, he needs a new plate. Lord. And that's basically how I feel now. Like I, if we go to a seafood boil restaurant and they don't have chicken wings or chicken tenders or something, I probably have already eaten before we went. Yeah, I have a supper club that meets or used to meet once a month but mm-hmm. pre-COVID. And I could go to a seafood restaurant because I'd make sure I try to go to any restaurant. And we that's the theme of it, to go and try out different things. Mm-hmm. But I could be at a seafood restaurant and I'm going to eat chicken. So everyone else is around is eating shrimp. They're eating crab. I'm eating chicken. Or if they had something, a beef dish. Yeah, very, very seldom. I'm not eating shrimp. I'm not eating crab, clams. I'm not eating that. None of it. None of the above. I'll eat calamari as an appetizer. That's it. Yeah. Um, That seems like that's been another trend, too. Uh, Not only the Cajun pastas, but Cajun seafood or seafood with the pasta. All these recipes that pop up on my Facebook timeline because I obviously the algorithm has me in its loop. Of course, of but, course. But recipes that pop up will be some sort of pasta dish, and somebody threw thirty dollars worth of seafood into it and said it was great. Of course, it was great. It cost you a ton to make it. Yeah, not at all. Mm-hmm. We had somebody come in and interview for a job at the at one of the last places I worked. So somebody came in and interviewed for a job, and we have them make a certain dish. So we told them to make a. I can't remember if we told them to make a pasta or a seafood dish or something. So they took pasta and, you know, cooked it off. And then they made a cream sauce for it. And then they put uh, like a seven or eight ounce piece of salmon in it. Uh, maybe like four ounces of crab meat and uh, shrimp. And they were like so impressed by what they did. Obviously, I won't say the names or where this was, but they were so impressed by what they did and... I had a chef that was basically on the same same wavelength as me where we say a lot with our face. So we just looked at each other and had a full conversation with no words where we were just like, oh, he was so impressed with the dish. And yet he spent about $60 worth of seafood in this dish. I'm like, you just killed our food cost. 
if this were to go on the menu, we, we can't right. use this. It's not just about flavor. You can throw a ton of great ingredients into something, but is it going to sell? And this is not going to work. If you want to cook this at home and you want to spend a hundred dollars to feed two people. Sure. But it's not going to work here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. The fact that it had so much seafood anyway, all I could think was I'm not eating that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just looked at it. I think I may have had a fork full of the noodles. It just tasted like a bunch of, uh, it's that seafoody taste. Like everything just tastes like old Bay. I know that taste. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, I'm good. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> done for me. I will pass. At all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pasta. Mm-hmm. That's my fave. Seafood. That's probably that type of restaurant is probably my least fave. Yeah. Yeah. Pasta is a blank canvas. Pasta is a lot of, uh, a lot of space, a lot of opportunity in pasta. Absorb so much flavor, so many different combinations. You could have it with like anything from macaroni and cheese to something tomato based to something cream based. There's so many possibilities for it, but you know, it, it it's really filling. And sometimes I just get overwhelmed with the amount of carbs that I'm ingesting sometimes. It is. I've tried not to cook it and do as, as much lately because, of course, our family challenge. Mm-hmm. Because in fact, I don't think I've cooked or done any this year. And, uh, but I always keep some for a rainy day. Again, you're right. It's a filling meal and it can last for a couple of days. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm good. I'm done. Any other uh, love of pasta or anything you want to share before I get to a couple picky questions here? Go ahead. What's your question? All right. I've been forgetting to ask these to the past few people, so I'm glad I actually don't have to go back and cut this one in later. Mm-hmm. But uh, first question, what is a food that you will absolutely not eat that most people will? Bananas. And of course, I knew that. Is, has it always been that way or it was it was a developing thing that happened over time? I've never liked bananas. I, I'd give you two. Bananas or green beans. I don't like either. Yeah, I think you just mentioned that to me recently, and I, and I didn't realize that. Because yeah. Lee's, one of the favorite places of us, is they have fantastic green beans. No. <clears throat> wow. They're red beans. Never. I do not eat. I, I ate some when I was young. I got sick. I've just never liked the taste or consistency. So, nope. Wow. I'm not eat green beans. Yeah, Tamara's on the train with the bananas. She hates bananas, but it was because she was forced to eat one every day when she was a kid. And I mean, in anything, I don't like bananas, like banana nut muffins. People say, oh, you have to have some banana bread. Nope. I just don't like it. On cereal, just a raw banana. I don't think they look, especially if they turn a little brown. Mm. It, they're just, no. Banana pudding? Never. And I know that's been something big in our family. Everybody could. I used to help our grandmother make her banana pudding and put the wafers in, the vanilla wafers. Wow. Nope. That was mom's yeah. favorite dessert. Not at all. Yeah, I wasn't as big a fan of it as, as a kid. I think it was because of the texture. But as I got older, I had so many different versions that I found one that made me go, OK, this is pretty good. And uh, recently, since we're on bananas and I know you hate bananas, we'll talk more about bananas. Why not? This recipe came up from a guy named Darius Cooks, and he put up a statement that kind of shook the the African-American community. It said bananas don't go in banana pudding. Mm. It seems like the ultimate contradiction to itself, but... Bananas don't go in banana pudding. So I watched him make this version of banana banana pudding in quotation marks with no bananas in it. And it actually came out pretty good. So he used cream cheese and he blended it with like a French vanilla jello pudding mix and then layered it with the different pepper farm cookies. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. So it gives you the banana pudding theme and it's yellow, but it doesn't actually have bananas in it. And uh, one of your favorite cousins took great offense to this like we were just decimating an american classic catris um so she thought we were starting a propaganda campaign to take bananas out of banana pudding and that it wasn't the case it's another option like i'll eat it with or without but the longevity of that particular banana pudding recipe that didn't have bananas in it it lasted like a week at the same texture pretty much the entire time and as soon as you throw bananas in it the next day i'm done i don't want it anymore i eat enough desserts that i'm good I'm good without that one. Yeah, I know you're a big cheesecake advocate. It's um, I would say it's a friend of mine, but it's not a friend of my waist. Hmm. But I love cheesecake. <laughs> What's the last new food you tried? That's a good question. Uh, maybe blackberries. Okay. I had not been a regular black, and I might have tasted them once or twice over the years. Mm-hmm. But now I get them and try them regularly. 
Oh, okay. I'll eat something but that. I mean, I would eat blueberries. I'd eat raspberries, but I will eat blackberries now hmm. on a regular basis. Now, <laughs> whether in a smoothie, whether just raw by themselves. So that's something that I've grown an affinity for lately. I know you mentioned earlier you didn't like blueberry pancakes. Do you like? What's your favorite breakfast food? Well, I love pancakes, just not blueberry pancakes. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, I like anything breakfasty. So grits, bacon. You eat eggs? I eat, oh, I love eggs. Oh. I don't think there's anything breakfasty I don't eat. Some, I love a, a nice quiche. Absolutely. All of the above. I think we need to have like a, just a family conversation about why, the, why there are so many opposites. You like eggs. I don't like eggs. And Phil and Gordy, one likes peas, one doesn't, one likes popcorn, one doesn't. Catrus and Nubian with the tomatoes. Like, what was happening here? I'll eat eggs in a second. That's no problem. In fact, I have some in my fridge now, and I'll do an omelet. Typically on Sundays when I'm watching church now that we're home, because I will make an omelet every Sunday now. And I have some mushrooms. And this Sunday, yesterday, I had mushrooms. I sliced up some onions, and I did an omelet. I grew into mushrooms after you tried to scar me for life with them on pizza. All right, I love mushrooms. Ugh, yuck. Well, and they look, just about anything. I have no problem with them. <laughs> they looked so terrible like they when you would get them on pizza and it was it was just like the seafood. Once it's on there, like I knew it was on there even if I picked mm-hmm. it off later. It wasn't the same anymore. I'd saute some spinach and put some in there and uh, yeah, all of that. But yeah, I love mushrooms. No. I have no problem with that. Mushrooms I had to grow into, but eggs, eggs are like, eggs to me are like bananas to you. Like I, I, I just don't see myself ever wanting them. I'll use them as an ingredient all the time, but not by themselves. I love eggs. So yeah, I don't mind breakfast at all. And I've been cooking more breakfast since I've been working from home. Okay. That's what, hence the blackberries. That's something I get and do. And again, if, even if it's on a smoothie with some powder, but yeah, I'll, that's been something lately. I'm like, I actually like these. <laughs> You try putting those in pancakes? No, not as of yet. Very seldom do I do extra things with pancakes. I actually like blueberries. Mm-hmm. I'll eat those. I just don't like blueberry pancakes. <laughs> I get it. That's a regular thing. Yeah. So, but I will eat regular pancakes. Again, that's something that I'm trying not to eat as much because then it comes with syrup and all those other things. Ah, uh, yeah. More high caloric. <laughs> yeah. The, the breakfast routine in the morning is so tough. And I, I had a conversation with Daniel, I think it was about this, uh, about growing up in the 90s and dealing with Pop-Tarts and toaster strudels and Eggo waffles and Sir. Aunt Jemima, whose name has now changed, and Mrs. Butterworth. Like, they they kill you with the syrup and sugar content before you even have your, you know, your first class of the day. So That's true. Other than that, that's about, that's about all I got on pasta. I just wanted to talk through some some likes, some dislikes, some how to cook it, because I know a lot of people think they know how to make pasta, and then uh, they end up with that bland water tasting pasta. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I don't do that. I-, I need to find some more nutritional pasta. I'm sure that's probably like an oxymoron okay. these days. But um, you, uh, you try your whole wheats. I have done. I have gotten whole wheat before. Yes. Okay. What about the? Uh, Berea makes like a veggie infused pastas now. I don't know that I've seen that. Try those out. Pretty good. The spaghetti one was actually pretty good. It was, um, I think they flavored it with like zucchini and spinach or something like that. It was green, but it's good. I like a regular spaghetti noodle. I don't like thin noodles and I don't like overly thick noodles. So I've grown out of the whole fettuccine phase. But. Yeah, I'll do that every now and then. Actually, what I do the most is angel hair, and I can tell you where I got that. My former, my late best friend Jonah. Jonah would only cook angel hair. <laughs> That's all he would do. So it turned me on to that. So I eat that a lot gotcha. when I get it. Now I'll do angel hair. Gotcha. Get it as thin as possible. Yes, sir. Yeah, good flavors, but they'll give you uh, not not like the whole wheat will. They'll give you the vegetable intake and help you out on those. I think some of them are flavored with tomato and some other stuff too. But good but stuff. See, I love unlike unlike those folks and as much as mom might have not made it but grandma certainly did i love vegetables oh yeah yeah i love vegetables it was just broccoli i'll eat all the asparagus i made some asparagus tonight earlier tonight so i will eat all of that yeah it was um it was later that i had to discover a lot of this stuff because i liked all the starchy stuff potatoes you know corn Mm -hmm. and they're vegetables but you know it's it's a different type of nutritional value that you get out of them 
So learning the broccoli, the cauliflower, the peas, that kind of, I loved all that stuff, even beans, which I know are different, but I loved all the things that kids wouldn't like. I just didn't have them that often. So Mm -hmm. getting older and, and getting through culinary school and learning the different types of things and, you know, the different experimentations, like making hummus with black eyed peas versus actual chickpeas. You can make a little bit of anything with everything. It's all about what are you willing to, uh, what are you willing to live with? Nubian said a lot of times that he made, he had to eat a lot of mistakes. Uh, uh, do it. I just think, sampling it out. Yeah. I think a lot of people are just afraid to eat, uh, eat the mistakes or once you get in a relationship or if you're cooking for people, you don't want them to taste what you messed up. So you got to test that stuff out by yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm you. Yes, sir. That's pretty much all I get. You got anything else for the people? Okay. Uh, it was great to have this moment with my little brother, and I'm proud of all the work and the things you do. And yeah, you're my personal chef. They know that. You <laughs> said that on past episodes. So I appreciate I certainly it. thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to show my creativity. It's uh, something I've worked hard at being able to do. And now I'm working on talking to you about it. So everybody continue to listen. Check out the website, yourfoodlooksfunny.com. Donate to the show, please. We're trying to get Adobe Audition so I can uh, record some multi-track stuff a little bit easier, get a little bit more fancy around here. Like I said on the post today, uh, make the show taste a little bit better. Sad pun, but I know. Come on. It's okay. Uh, Appreciate everybody listening. Check out the social media, YFLF Podcast at Instagram and Twitter. All past episodes, a couple recipes on the site. See you next week. All right.